Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is that you are tuning in. This is Unapologetically Me, featuring me. No special guest, just me. So how are you guys doing? It's been a bit, it's been a week, you know. I'm trying to get these videos out quickly, but it's been a busy summer so far. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is some more of Salvador Ramos. You know this by the title, the thumbnail. I'm still not over it yet, okay? Uh, a lot of the media is over it. I'm not. And I have really dug into not just this case and not just Salvador Ramos, but I have dug into several school shootings um, over the years and the people that committed them. And the next couple of videos are going to be deep diving into what's going on, what is happening, why is this has this become an epidemic. Um, school shootings are very unique to America and there's a reason for this and I have been digging into the reason and uh, not so much in this video but in the next couple of videos we're going to be getting more into that. So for this video I just did want to dig a little bit more into Ramos and debunk a couple of rumors that are out there just because that's what I do. <laughs> so let's get right into it. I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. <laughs> Shouldn't be trusting me, I could be making it all up, you know First and foremost, because you know that I like to make sure that the facts about any case that I bring to you guys uh, are clear, um, there was something circulating on Facebook talking about how it's possible that Salvador Ramos was transgendered and that he walked around in women's clothing. It also talked about how he had a part-time job at McDonald's and that he dropped out of school because he was obsessed with video games and uh, that he had a brand new experience expensive uh, console and an F-250 pickup platinum. Uh, this was supposedly a fully loaded truck and you know how was he able to afford this and yada 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 and it all boiled down to a conspiracy theory basically and uh, well let's just start with first things first here. So First of all, he's not transgendered, uh, and he did not wear women's clothing. <laughs> he did not work at McDonald's either. He actually worked at Wendy's, and he most certainly did not have a brand new fully loaded F-250 Platinum. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I saw the photo of the crash truck and the videos and everything, and uh, it did happen to be a Ford truck, yes, but it was actually a 2008 Ford F-150, and the truck was owned by Ramos's grandmother. And his grandmother, his grandfather also said in an interview, which I talked about in my last video on this subject, um, that Salvador didn't even have a driver's license, let alone a car. He didn't even know how to drive a car or <laughs> truck. And uh, it's quite obvious because he crashed it. Uh, so I also just want to throw in here that he's not, an illegal immigrant. That is another thing that has been going around. Um, he was born here, uh, I believe in North or South Dakota, and then he moved with his family to Texas. So why were these rumors started? Well, like I said originally, conspiracy theories. Everybody loves a good conspiracy theory, do they not? But, you know, while I myself have, uh, you know, kind of gotten interested in some conspiracy theories over time. There are legit conspiracy theories and then there are ones that can be absolutely proven without a shadow of a doubt that it that's not the case. And this conspiracy theory, I believe, is one of those. It's it's just not the case. Um I don't put anything past the government at this point. I want to say that first and foremost as well. Um especially these days. But I certainly do not believe that um, any of this is true because there's just no evidence to prove this to be the case. In fact, that post listed dollar amounts for each of these, uh, you know, each of these items that this person was posting about. And it stated that Salvador Ramos was making minimum wage at a McDonald's 
and that he had a total number of expenditures this past year of $80,400. And this included the F Ford or the Ford F250 Platinum, which he did not have. Uh, they also estimate the cost of the rifles used in the shooting to be between $6,000 and $8,000. Um, optics that were used, about $1,000. Ammo, $900. Body armor, $1,000. The truck, of course, $71,000. And first of all, who buys the car straight up these days? I mean, <laughs> props to you if you have the money to just drop seventy grand on a truck. But most of us, uh, <laughs> if I were to buy a $30,000 car, I'm not going to drop $30,000 on that car, right? I'm going to buy it off, right? I'm going to get a loan out on it and I'm going to pay off that loan. I'm going to have a car payment. So that's just so ignorant. I mean, to think that everyone can just do shit like that, and especially a kid. But that's this is where it's going, though. This is where it's going. How could he, an 18-year-old working part-time at McDonald's afford these things? So this is where the conspiracy is going to start coming in. So just hold up. We are going to get there. Some people, I believe, are just so ignorant. And they just want to start rumors. And people that don't use their brain properly believe them. And this is exactly how rumors and conspiracies start. We talked about the truck, but the next part of this post, like I said, that um, Ramos had purchased and taken into the school two brand new Daniel Defense AR-15 and four rifles with military grade optics. It also claimed each rifle between $3,000 and $4,000. Thousands of rounds of amu expensive military grade ammunition and a thousand dollar bulletproof vest. So the Houston Chronicle reported that one of the weapons Ramos took into Rob Elementary was a Daniel Defense DDM4 V7 rifle, which retails for about $1,870. So their original statement to be between $6,000 and $8,000, uh, and then they went, they, what, they dropped it down to what, four, th three to four thousand. It was only one thousand eight hundred dollars. ABC News published that the rifle was modeled after the M4 carbine, the U.S. military go to rifle. But ABC News also reported that according to pictures of the shooter's guns that were posted on Instagram, he appeared to have purchased a battery powered holographic site that typically sells for around $725. So these are the optics that they were talking about him purchasing. And they said that was $1,000. Well, they're finding that the exact one that he had on his site, and this is if he bought it new, would retail for about $725. So we're, we're off there a little bit. <laughs> right away. The Chronicle reported that the other gun brought into the school by Ramos was a Smith & Wesson MP15, which retails for about $1,300. Um, the article from the Chronicle said that Ramos purchased hundreds of rounds of ammunition, not thousands, and as the Facebook post claimed, as far as the tactical vest or the bulletproof vest, there they weren't able to figure out how much that cost. So whether or not it was a thousand dollars, I don't know. I doubt it. But anyway, uh, I, again, I don't know. So this post was titled "More Oddities: Ray Texas School Shooting and It or Ray Texas School Shooting," and it delved into falsely labeling the school shooting as a false flag. So again, this post claimed without evidence that someone was funding Ramos and was involved in training him as well, uh, all to provide leverage to end the Second Amendment. So this is where that conspiracy theory starts to come in. So what they're saying is they realized that he couldn't have afforded all of this really expensive equipment totaling up to $81,000, including the truck. Um, so it must have been the government to um and and the government is like basically funding 
these kids and, and it came in with him because oh well he's illegal so they said well you can stay here if you do this you know what I'm saying and this is just so ridiculous and really takes the focus off of what really happened here I mean we're sitting here talking about conspiracy theories when there are 19 children that were killed and I really think that you know some of this shit is just madness it's just madness it's chaos and it, it's it's meant to distract so this post also said that the exact same kind of guns that Ramos used were found in the possession of Stephen Paddock. And he's the Las Vegas shooter in 2017, um, where he shot and killed um, concert goers from a high floor window of a Las Vegas hotel room. And ABC15.com reported that 24 guns were found in that hotel room. It's true that the list showed that Paddock did use a Daniel Defense DDM 4V11, similar to Ramos's DDM 4V7. However, this wasn't exactly the same gun as charged by the Facebook post. We also found no evidence, or the people that were writing this, abc15.com, we also found no evidence that Paddock carried a Smith & Wesson m and 15 like Ramos had with him at Robb Elementary. So no, they did not have the same guns at all. Lastly, the post charged again without any evidence that Ramos knew Peyton Gendron, the alleged, alleged the alleged shooter in the deadly mass shooting at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, which occurred on May 14th of 2022. And there has been no evidence found that Ramos knew Gendron at all. And I don't know if I'm saying Gendron right, but it's spelled like that. This information I got from a post, in case you guys want to check it out, published on June 7th of 2022 by Jordan Lyles on Snopes.com. And the article is titled, How Accurate is the More Oddities Ray Texas Shooting Facebook Post? So if you guys want to check that out, that's on Snopes.com. And the author is Jordan Lyles. It was just uh, published last week. So some other things <laughs> that have evidence um, or other messages sent to, or are other messages that were sent to females by Salvador Ramos on an app called Yubo. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with that app or if your kids have that app or not, but I guess he was very active on this app. And my opinion terrorized people in these live chats and through messaging. In one instance, Ramos said, everyone in the world deserves to get our word. R -E in a live chat just bust on in there and he's like hey everybody in the world deserves to get hard you know and what's I, I it's not funny but unfortunately there are kids out there that talk like this and all it is is talk so I understand how it's difficult to say is this just you know a shitty kid you know with problems or is this someone that we need to be worried about right but I think as we get on here and you, you hear more about this, you'll you'll see that these are more red flags than they are just a kid trying to be an ass and, and you know, get attention. But a 17-year-old girl uh, met Ramos on Yubo, and it has a feature that enables users to join live chat rooms, known as lives. <laughs> she told Sky News that um, Ramos would join these chat rooms and he would threaten um R word and kidnapping and murder and she said that he privately messaged her and other girls and would threaten them if they didn't respond on valentine's day ramos texted the 17 year old that he would worship her before telling her to go jump off a bridge when she didn't reply ramos then found her real name and phone number and sent her a threatening text message the message read hi girl's name are you going to ask how i got your number answer me you're going to regret not doing what i say and then he ended it the biggest op here which was his handle on yubo while this girl's identity is being kept private her story has been verified and she decided to speak out because she believes a check of his mobile phone might have prevented him from buying guns and she feels angry especially because Yubo 
lacked to take any action on this matter. The girl said that she and her friends had reported him repeatedly to the app for using hate speech and harassment, and they only received automated replies from the app. She said that he would just harass people. He would threaten R word, he would kidnapping, murder. He would say, do you even know who I am? And you'll be famous if you follow me. He really wanted to be known for this. Like he, he wanted to basically get these people to follow him and because he was going to do this thing and he wanted fans. He wanted fangirls, I'm assuming. And, um, you know, and it's so messed up because girls will fan over these people. Like, Aiden Fucci, like the videos that I did on him, like there are girls that are just obsessed with these severely troubled psychopathic guys. And, And I just don't understand it. So anyway, when news of the attack broke, she said that she was shocked, but not surprised. He was given the name Yubo School Shooter. She explained that people would join the lives and be like, oh, hey, look, it's the Yubo School Shooter. He never tried to shut down that nickname, and he seemed almost proud of it. She is still an active member of Yubo, and she says that she loves the friends that she has made on the app. She says people used to stand up for the girls and be like, get the fuck out of here, you're a weirdo, stop, Um, these girls don't want you. Uh, I'm not going to lie, she says. He was bullied on the app. It's almost a high school community. There are losers. There are popular people. There, it's it's weird. Um, So basically, these apps are no different than it would be in the high school lunchroom or whatever. And I know that firsthand because I have kids. Uh, None of them have Yubo, but you know, Snapchat, all of it. It's it's like the same thing. They they get these group chats going, and um, it's no different than being at school. Um, as far as bullying goes. So this girl and her friends worried that they figured they should have done more and then report him on the app, like call the police. But the 17-year-old believes that if his phone had been examined as a part of a background check, he would have been stopped or he could have been stopped. That is, that is very far fetched. Uh, I, I do have my ideas of things that need to change as far as gun control and being able to purchase weapons. And we'll get into that in some other videos that I have coming up already. Um, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to be redundant. So there is a place for me to talk about this that I have left myself (laughs) in videos. So we're going to wait to get there, but, um, taking someone's phone and going through someone's phone, even if that were the case people would erase things there are ways to hide things if if we knew that our phones were going to be looked at um i'm sure we would not have certain things on them then you know just like if you're with someone who's a chronic cheater they're going to learn how to hide these things so i don't know but i mean yeah i i think someone's phone could tell a lot about what they who they really are you know and uh but again that's for another time so Um, she says all it would have taken is a background check. If someone had gone through the tapes on his phone or anything like that, that's all it would have taken. It's just crazy that he was able to purchase that gun and walk into a school because we know how crazy he was. We knew long before this that he was a monster. It also goes on to say he was never normal. There was never a point where we could sit down and he took off his mask and was a normal person. I don't even think it was a mask. I think it was genuinely him. And if you watch my last video, you will know that my that his mother said about him, of all the things she could have said about him, she said, he was himself. So, and I don't know about any of you parents out there, but if someone were to ask you to describe your child or one of your children, if you're anything like me and most parents, I think you'd be able to come up with loads of shit to the point where people would have to tell you, okay, we get it. Your kid's awesome. Okay. Like you can stop now. Right. Or even if your kid was troubled, you know, it, it, you would have a lot of things to say, to say he was himself. And that's it. He was quiet. He was himself. (laughs) 
they, they this feels like i i mean did anybody know i don't think his parents knew him i don't think his grandparents knew him i don't think he had any adult supervision for the most part i don't think anyone was talking to him for, i mean it just watch my last video it has a couple you know interviews and whatever it's just no one was there for this kid and it's very clear that even when asked, they didn't have anything to say about him other than he was quiet and he was himself. Well, everybody's themselves. Like, what the fuck? So this girl feels that Ramos could have been stopped. I think in order for him to have been stopped, people would have had to notice what he was doing. And unfortunately, his family was not close enough with him to notice anything and that is a sad fact any of the friends that he used to have he didn't talk to anymore they didn't talk to him anymore and he was mainly it was because he was so weird and he did really crazy shit like he cut up his face one time and you know at first he said it was a cat and then he was like just kidding man i like cut myself you know um like none of them reported him though and the girls on Yubo did report him on the app, but no one reported him to police. And I don't think law enforcement was aware of him being as troubled as he was. Um, he was no longer going to school. He had no friends. And his family apparently didn't give a shit about him. And that's my belief. That's my opinion. Did Salvador Ramos have red flags that were noticeable? Absolutely. Absolutely. But did the right people notice that he had these issues? And the evidence shows that they did not. So far, anyway. Because there was a report that Salvador Ramos was arrested when he was 14 for saying, you know, when I'm a senior in 2022, I'm going to shoot up the school. And this was said by Texas Representative Tony Gonzalez in an interview with the Fox News or with Fox News on the Friday after the shooting. However, Tony Gonzalez said, but if law enforcement, you know, identified him for years, four years ago as a threat, we need to figure out why he wasn't, you know, how he got removed from that. But <laughs> that's a quote, OK? OK. But while Ramos did not have an adult criminal record, having just turned 18 a couple of days before the incident, it is possible that he had a juvenile record, a juvenile criminal record. And this is an idea that has been floated by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Now, the Daily Mail reported that an incident involving two Columbine infatuated teenage boys were arrested for threatening to shoot up a school it did take place in Uvalde in 2018, but their identities are reportedly not confirmed or were not confirmed at the time, but the Uvalde Police Department has denied that the incident involves Ramos, according to Fox News reporter Bill Malugan. What I do know is that juvenile criminal records are sealed, so there is no way for us to validate these names of the two boys that were arrested in those conspiracy charges back in 2018 because it wouldn't be available to the public and that right there ladies and gentlemen is an issue in and of itself juvenile criminal records are sealed but not to everyone only to the public which means juvenile records should be included in a background check especially if you are allowing an 18 year old who basically has a fresh criminal record no matter what they did beforehand and look immaculate on paper again i have my own beliefs on gun control and one of them is to raise the age required to purchase any type of firearm I have done a lot of research on this over the last few weeks, and I have found one thing in common with every single shooter. Well, whether it was diagnosed or not, every single one of these kids suffered from depression with anxiety or some other mental issue. Depression in teens is exceptionally concerning and dangerous. Most adults above the age of 21 have depression rates under 10%, more like 8%, 6%. It, it kind of varies up and down, but it's under 
meaning that less than 10% of the U.S. population suffers from depression after the age of 21. After the age of 25, that percentage goes down even more. But ages 16 to 21, the depression rate is 15% or higher. So if we're allowing 18, 19, 20-year-olds to purchase firearms, and not just firearms, but the type of firearm including assault rifles, we are putting deadly instruments into the hands of mentally unstable people. Kids. And I have always said 18 is too young to be able to purchase a firearm without the consent of an adult. And I don't care if 18 is considered an adult. It shouldn't be. Not for something like that. I know how I was at 18. I know how my daughter is at 18 and how her boyfriends are and her friends are at 18, 19, 20. And, you know, I I feel like it should be at least 25. I also believe that not only should a full background check be done, including criminal background checks, um, juvenile, let me be clear, but mental health screenings as well as substance abuse screenings should be done. Many will argue that this is a huge invasion of privacy, and it is. It is. But when you own a gun, you are holding other people's lives in your hands. And as much as you own that gun for hunting, recreation, protection from enemies, you have a responsibility to make sure that it doesn't get into the wrong hands. So, you know, that the wrong people don't find it and do unspeakable acts with it. And in many of these school shooting cases, the kids were able to get the firearm from a parent or a grandparent or buy it off of another student who got it from a grandparent or a parent with just by it not being secured properly. So if grown ass adults can't keep their firearms out of the hands of kids, then why would we think an 18 year old, a 20 year old or even a 25 year old is going to be mindful enough and responsible enough to make sure that the little brother or sister doesn't get a hold of it. Well, <laughs> I know it's a huge debate and honestly, everybody has their own opinions on it. I just wish everybody could be responsible and sane, but <laughs> the way the world is today, I don't see that happening anytime soon. And uh, unfortunately, we have to do something about it. But guns are not the only problem. And I've said it before. A gun is a tool. It's an instrument. And if someone wants to hurt someone and they have that urge, they'll find a way. We need to find the people that have this urge and help them. And when do we have the most control over people in and the most control to help someone is when they're minors. When they're living under a guardian's roof, they're living with their parents, their grandparents, some legal guardian. They are being watched more. They're going to school every day. They have people watching them and knowing who they are, their personalities. Nobody wakes up at the age of 18, 16, 45, 65, and decides, you know what, I think I'm gonna go kill someone today. Or, you know what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and perform a mass shooting this week. You know, that just doesn't happen. Can it? I'm sure it can. I mean, anything's possible, right? But that's usually not the way this shit works. There are signs, there are red flags, and they start very early on. I do have another video prepared for you guys to talk more about this. And in the next video, we're going to talk about one of the most, in my opinion, preventable school school shootings that has happened thus far. I think some of you guys may know which one I'm talking about. If you've been paying attention to some things or if you're really, you know, on this topic. And in case you guys are wondering why I'm going so balls to the wall with this, I have kids right? I have four kids and they're all in school. So, well, with the exception of my youngest who hasn't even gone to school yet. And I'm already terrified. Um, 
I have a fourth grader who just went into fifth grade. I have one going into college. I have one going into high school. And I'm just, I'm a nervous wreck because these are mass shootings, but there are many high school shootings where one or two kids get shot. And just because, you know, a mass shooting is considered four or more, but there are shootings all the time that some maybe they don't get killed they just get injured or the, you know but it, they're still shootings There's, these are still happening and every single one has the possibility to be a mass shooting and i think that we have to start doing something so i'm gonna get off on a rant but uh, so i'm gonna cut my own self off here you other than that <laughs> i just want to thank you guys so much for watching um please like please subscribe please share um, certain things need to get out there. They they need to be heard and certain views need to be heard as well. We, we always hear one side of everything and a lot of YouTubers have created a platform, including myself, to speak the truth and to really get into the facts and the evidence about certain things. I'm trying to do is spread awareness on things and I'm trying to spread truth and fact, not bullshit. And all I can say is if you don't believe what I have to say or you think that I'm blowing smoke up your ass, just research it. I have no problem with anyone telling me that what I'm talking about is bullshit. That's fine, you, ha you are entitled to that opinion. If you're interested in the things that I have to say, then please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell next to it so that you're notified every time I put up a new video. A lot of my videos get hidden. They're really not out there. I'm a small YouTuber. I just started for one and for two, I speak a little bit controversially. So um, not always the first thing that's gonna pop up, but if you like what you hear and you think that this is a good place for you to get information, then go ahead and subscribe. Also like, share, uh, a lot of these things, they just need to get out. They need to get out. People need to hear the truth. And um, I'm definitely one of those people who is always seeking the truth. So I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.